It's a little off the beaten path, certainly less visible to some driving to big box stores and chain restaurants in Moorhead, especially during long construction season when detours are everywhere. But the freeze in Moorhead is an iconic location in the hearts and minds of many of its longtime customers. It's been part of Moorhead's fabric since 1963, and as of late, it hasn't had the benefit of name recognition that a corporate behemoth like the local Dairy Queen enjoys. It used to be known as the Tasty Freeze, part of a national chain. Now, it's just the freeze. My kids ready for the day and then come to work okay. get everything started clean the machine only to have it explode on me so. meet jessica malvin she's in her fifth season at the freeze as co-owner along with her friend also named jess she's been in and out as an employee for 21 years it's a long time she hadn't planned on ever owning it but fate works in funny ways the owner was getting a little bit older um, and then sick he was diagnosed and so when it came time, he's like, I need to retire. He had SCAF Apartments that approached and said, well, we'll buy it, but we're going to tear it down and put an apartment. Dwayne and Fern Ellefson, the longtime former co-owners of the Freeze, balked at the notion of tearing down their life's work to make way for bland apartment buildings. Jess, along with a co-worker, wouldn't let it happen. Day when it came time, we're like, all right, we're going to do this. We're going to buy it. And she's been keeping it going ever since. <laughs> You find her hard at work here over Labor Day weekend, usually a time for the head honchos of any business to expect their employees to fill in the gaps while they head off for vacation. Jess takes the opposite approach. She'll be hunkered down with just a handful of employees over the holiday weekend. She offered to step in to allow her employees a chance to take a vacation themselves. An extraordinary act of generosity, considering she has a career in the city of Dilworth outside of her duties at the Freeze. A lesson she learned from Dwayne, a mentor of sorts to her. There's a lot I could say about Dwayne. Um, we were all treated with respect and we were all, you know, during the off season, he would still call in and check on us. So he was just a very, a different boss that you normally wouldn't have. But um, it hasn't been all fun and games. Running a business is often more work than pleasure. And in her five years as co-owner, the freeze has dealt with no shortage of curveballs. In 2020, the COVID-19 pandemic took the entire world off guard, forcing years of mandated masks, social distancing, and isolation. <laughs> it's a tight squeeze inside the freeze, not exactly ideal conditions during the age of COVID. The pandemic really threw us for a loop. Uh, we weren't prepared for that. I don't think anybody was, but that definitely made us learn how to adapt and change. Then, just a few months after the pandemic began, came a vandalism incident. The window here is completely smashed in. There's some hanging glass, so that's why we secured it. Along with the windows, the inside of the freeze saw heavy damage. Glass everywhere. Thousands of dollars of inventory and equipment had to be thrown out. It's been one thing after another. And although it's over, or at least almost over, there's been road construction on and off throughout her entire time there. The latest project, the long-awaited and frequently delayed Moorhead Railroad Underpass project on Southeast Main Avenue, has been a particularly frustrating headache. It took four years. Four years. It made it a real pain in the neck to get over to the freeze. Right away, I was calling the city of Moorhead, um, Jonathan, the traffic engineer, and like, Jonathan, you need to get down here. We have a problem. At one point, they tried putting the new roadway through our parking lot. And I was like, well, that's not going to work. I wondered if this place was going to stay open or be able to stay open just because it was so blocked off. There's really hard to get here. Um, but it seems like the neighborhood's kind of kept it al alive. So. Kept alive by both longtime customers You're right there. and longtime employees. Okay, guys. Loyal first to the Ellefsons and now to Jess. You could be here two weeks, you could be here 10 years. Your family, if you need her, she's got your back. She is just a person who really encompasses a community and that community mentality of other people have you, not just your parents, not just your friends, not just your siblings, but other people in the community are aware that you're here and exist and we care. There's a delay. There you are. Thank you. 
It's clear that the freeze is seen as a special place in Moorhead. Customers come to order anything from an ice cream cone to a cheeseburger. Cheese curds! While many of the Freeze's customers are regulars, there is one group of loyal customers that makes the Freeze a destination every single week come rain, shine, or even snow. We come, we start right away, and then, you know, of course it's parkas, you know, to, yeah. to shorts, to jackets again. You know. <laughs> Meet the Tasty Tuesday crew. And you saw footprints like up to the table, you know, we sit down with us. A group that got its start when Lee noticed the long lines at the nearby Moorhead DQ, but not many people at the Freeze. He says it all started after one of his friends encouraged him to get on Facebook. I did the most anti-Facebook thing ever. I created a group where you gotta go meet some people. Throwing himself out there worked in his favor. The group has been going strong for well over a decade. A friend of mine and his, uh, we went to high school together and they, him and his friend, Lee, Lee Schauer and Kevin Schmidt decided to just, well let's just have a get together. They can bring kids, you know, and have fun. The group actually started meeting on Thursdays but made a change because of the TV show Glee. Lee's wife couldn't bear to miss new episodes. So Tasty Thursdays became Tasty Tuesdays. While each member of the group has their own favorite item on the menu. I love it. Thank you. You're welcome. Well usually it's after work and you know it's summertime. time. Double cheese and fries. I rarely get ice cream. She's the ice cream freak. It's Sunday. <laughs> That's awesome. Hot fudge banana, people. <laughs> Lee has a tradition of his own. Whoever's working gets me. I say, hey, uh, give me a surprise. And I'll say, you know, five, six dollars, whatever amount. And then, uh, you know, I say, no mint, no nuts. You know? So uh, they'll make me a creation of, you know, and I'll be surprised. It's always, it's always good. For loyal members of the Tuesday team, the Freeze is more than just an ice cream shop. It's a family. Well, uh, well, yeah, we've got new friends that, you know, come out of the Facebook world, you know, that, you know, I knew for years, but never really hung out with them. Some of them turned out really good. The Tasty Tuesday group aren't the only loyal customers of the Freeze. Many others frequent the establishment time and time again every year. Pat Ward has lived in Moorhead for about 15 years, and he first learned about the freeze while working for FM Ambulance. You know, I kind of like that it's, uh, you know, a local spot, and um, I always get good service and good ice cream, good food, so um, just easy to get to and kind of a nice uh, little out of the, off the beat path spot, so. Others have freeze history that goes back more than just a couple of years. My grandparents would actually take us here. They lived up north in North Morgan. They'd drive us all the way down here just to get some ice cream. The freeze is a hidden gem that makes the experience fun for all ages. The customers seem to have a favorite menu item. Pat's daughter Charlie enjoys her favorite treat. Do you have a favorite flavor like chocolate or vanilla? Vanilla. Vanilla? But it isn't just the customers that say the freeze is a special place. The employees say the customers are the highlights of the job and they seem to have their favorite moments as well. My favorite is when you get a little kid that's like, I want, I want a sprinkle cone. And they don't know that that's not how a cone comes, but the parents are like, I don't know what they mean. Or I want a red cone, they don't know what they mean. And you make it and you hand it out and they're like, <gasps> like it's the world's best ice cream they've ever had in their life. Like that's my favorite. <laughs> but for some, the freeze is more than just the place where they get their favorite treat. For some, it's the place where they met their life partner. Absolutely. Six and a half years ago in July, I met my wife, Emily. I was riding my bike. I had a kid cart behind with a German Shepherd with my best friend Yogi here in it. And uh, we stole this little girl's heart. <laughs> We've been together every day since. Emily yes. Ashner admits that at first, Yogi was more of the object of her eye than Jake. <laughs> After all, who could resist that <laughs> face? I saw him and I walked up and I said, hey, can I meet your dog? You know, I love German Shepherds, I want to meet him. He goes, yeah, his name's Yogi. My name's Jacob. They both say the freeze will always have a special place in their hearts and they make it a part of their annual celebration. Absolutely, we come back here every anniversary. And as their family grows, the freeze will continue to be a part of their lives. For sure. yes. We got big news, we got a little one on the way. <laughs> and so it'll have some ice cream too when it comes out and gets in the <laughs> For employees like Amanda, seeing the connections people have made at the Freeze is very special. And I love, I like the cute old couples too, that come and they, they get their cone, because that for them was a date. That was like their first date and they get to relive it all the time. No 
Oh, we <laughs> met over there. The high school. The high school. It's the a high smaller school. story yeah. than that, actually. Clearly, the freeze has been an important part of some people's lives. That's perhaps more true for the family who used to run the show over here than anybody else. Fern Ellison co-owned the freeze for around 30 years and has history with the place dating back to her childhood. I actually grew up across the street from the Tasty Freeze, and I remember when it was built, which ages me. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I so there's um I remember it, it opened up and it was 50 flavors of shakes, and sneaking over there when I wasn't supposed to. Her history as an owner started back in 1992. Dwayne had always wanted to own a restaurant, but owning a, a large restaurant was a little bit more than, than what we were prepared for. Fern and Dwayne Allison's daughters, Rachel and Terry, were both working at the freeze at the time. They caught wind that the owners back then were looking to sell and passed along that info to their folks. They came home and said, Dad, Mom, the Tasty Freeze is for sale. And so it was kind of the answer for him to be able to have the restaurant he'd always wanted. And um, and the girls were there to train us. And I, I remember training them in and thinking it was weird teaching my parents how to do something. It was a bit of a strange dynamic, learning the tricks of the trade from your children. It was a lot of work for the whole family. Both Duane and Fern had separate careers in addition to their duties at the freeze. Fortunately, their daughters helped fill in the gaps. Or two, I would work when my parents couldn't, so that mm -hmm. one of us kind of was always there. So I think I, I remember more often than not me relieving my father. Employees naturally learn their workplace behaviors from their managers. So the tight knit nature of a family owned business naturally became part of the workplace culture of the freeze. In fact, staff became so close with the Ellifsons that Duane started a highly unusual tradition, going on cruise ship vacations with some of his most loyal employees. He, after my fifth season, we were talking, he was telling us stories about when he was young and he would go on cruises. And we convinced him, we're like, well, let's do it. Let's all go for one. The, the really family thing about those trips, Duane didn't care what you did all day. Did not care. But you had supper together every single night. And on those cruise night family dinners, he expected people to dress their best. Dwayne's showing up in like a full-blown tux, full-blown tux. You're like, okay, so we all learned how to buy a cocktail dress. So and what's fun is when you go in the small building, mm -hmm. but the walls would be lined with pictures from the different cruises. And so it, it was um, like a living room with people's you know, family pictures up. It's a remarkable thing for a boss to do, and it left an impression on everyone the Ellifsons worked with. He taught us a lot without actually like lecturing us like a parent. Dwayne passed away in 2021 after battling illness for years, but he's left his family and employees, or perhaps more accurately, friends with a lifetime of memories. I did not realize until after Dwayne passed that how much of an impact that he had. A long legacy to look back on, but much like the ice cream at the freeze, nice her memories are less bitter more sweet. Went from being, I think, just a, a kind of a little mom and pop um, location in the corner to a place that's grown to be iconic in the community. Um, I'm still very proud of, of what Duane did. He really made that the place that it is now. And both she and Rachel are rooting for the little business that could. Just really glad that um, you know everything that my parents built is continuing with the Jesses. That's why they sold it to them and not to someone who might have paid more only to take the business down. Uh, we none of us really cared what we would benefit from financially by letting someone tear it down. It, that didn't matter. It was we needed to have the, the freeze, the tasty freeze, live as long as it can. <laughs> Did you want three quarts of vanilla? As the pages on the calendar turn to fall, the freeze begins the process of boarding up for the season, an annual tradition of sorts.
However, that didn't stop customers from coming up to the window one last time to grab what's left of the ice cream for the season. Thank you for stopping, Kate. Of course. We missed you this season. Until the last board comes up. It's kind of sad because I'm like, oh, I should have gotten some of that before we ran out and things like that because I love ice cream. It's also why I love working here. <laughs> The last day at the freeze brings all kinds of emotions, and no better word comes to mind to describe the atmosphere than bittersweet. Oh my goodness, there's a lot of emotions on a day like today. I mean, excited to have a little bit of free time with my kids, but sad because I really enjoy coming here. I love seeing the customers, the regulars that have become like family, so it's bittersweet. It's very, very emotional. I mean, it's a little sad just because, you know, I'm friends with my coworkers and everything, and it's a fun, easy job. I hate that because it used to be like rock, but now it's like the bison horns. <laughs> and I'm a UND girl. But I'm excited for next season. And, you know, the cold makes it a little bit easier. So <laughs> I don't mind that much. <laughs> One thing that won't grow cold is the memories that came with such a wild year, coming out of a pandemic and road construction that didn't seem to end. Caramel turtle. That we just try to be a family. And then yeah, our regulars, our customers, the community. I can't believe how much the community, people will come up to you in the grocery store and it's, it just means a lot. It's really nice to hear those kind words and everything. Look at the swirl. You know, having a business, it's, it's not easy. There's a lot of ups and downs, but I truly, every time there was something that bad that happened, it was the community that came about and like made us feel better. You know, 2020, we lost the franchise and we were just heartbroken. And a few days later, then we got the best of the uh, Red River Valley for ice cream. So it's just like those little things that maybe people don't know. When the boards come down in the spring, old stories will again be shared and new ones will be added to the freeze history book. It is, um, it gets a little, you know, I get emotional um, for how much I appreciate um, having everybody and like regulars that I've literally watched grow up and now they have kids and see them and be a part of that journey and watching them grow. I don't know. And then they come they're like, oh, she served me my first cone. You know, so it's, it's having those moments. I'm a little saddened that it's the last day, but it'll always be here next year and the year after. The somber memories and sweet stories come from both sides of the counter. Okay, so I have the medium peanut butter cup mixer, the peanut parfait with caramel in the puff cup. As customers also have to wait until the spring. Come support Tasty Freeze. Price is right, ice cream is good. You'll love it. Wait till next March, see you in the spring. Um, but it is, I don't know, they, I always try to be in the window just so I can see the customers, talk to them, say goodbye, yeah, enjoy that moment. There you go. Those stories swirling together like chocolate and vanilla with the story of the freeze itself. You know, not having the road construction, not having to worry about COVID and taking, you know, when people are missing um, at work. So it, there's a lot of brightness in the future, I think. As the lights dim and the sign goes dark for another season, Spring cannot come soon enough for this community and the staff here. Another chance to order a shake or banana split and come back to chill at the freeze. The banana split? When you see a postcard of Moorhead, it should be on the postcard, just because, especially now it's just so prominent when you are in that area, it stands alone now. Have a great night.